Hello sports fans and welcome. My name is Professor S and today on Hasty History we're going to talk about the Spanish Inquisition. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why is he wearing a black bathrobe and holding something he got at the souvenir shop in Universal Studios? Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to use Harry Potter to help us learn about and hopefully remember some stuff about the Spanish Inquisition. Okay? Before we can do that though, we need to start off with some of that sweet, sweet context. So let's start there. All right, so back in the day, there's a place called the Iberian Peninsula. Nowadays, we call it Spain and Portugal, but back then, it was the Iberian Peninsula, okay? Now, back in the day, we're talking about it's ruled by Christians, specifically Goths. Now, these aren't the Goths you're thinking of. It's just what they were called, and they happen to be Christian, right? Now, the Christians get kicked out of the Iberian Peninsula by a group of Muslims called the Moors. Now, problem is, the Moors don't finish the job. The Christian Goths, some of them anyway, they actually escape to, to the mountains, to, to the foothills of the Iberian Peninsula, and that's where they wait, and they plot their revenge, and they do it for like 800 years. And this is what we call the Reconquista, which is a lot more fun to say than it was to endure, because it's basically this 800-year process of the Christians trying to take back the Iberian Peninsula, and eventually they actually pull it off. 800 or so years after they've been kicked out, they managed to wrest power back from the Muslims that had taken it over. So there are two people that are basically in charge, Ferdinand and Isabella, and they were sort of the 1492 version of the power couple. Uh, they were ruling together, and uh, most importantly, they were both very, very Catholic. Now, what they were worried about is that all the people that they had just taken over the Iberian Peninsula from, because see, some of them weren't Catholic, some of them were still Jewish or Muslim. They were worried that some of these people uh, weren't going to convert or that they weren't being converted. They didn't like this idea one bit. So what they do is they decide to, they want to make it illegal basically. Everybody within their kingdom has to be Catholic. And to cement this, they go to the Pope at the time, Sixtus IV, and they say, hey, Sixtus, buddy, we need a papal bull. Now, a papal bull is essentially an edict from the church that says, hey, you guys over there, you're going to do this and you're going to do it this way. And people back then, they had to listen because the Pope had a lot of power. The church had a ton of political power. So papal bull was, it was essentially law. So they get a papal bull that says it's illegal not to be Catholic, right? And they're still worried. They're still paranoid that there might be people within their kingdom that aren't totally Catholic, that might be practicing religions other than Catholicism behind closed doors. So they start an investigation. See, Inquisition and investigation, they're the same thing, just different words. They start an investigation and they start grabbing people who they think might not be totally Catholic. They pull them in front of tribunals, which are sort of like um, councils or, or almost like juries, right? They pull them in front of tribunals and they make them, you know, state their case, and prove that they're Catholic. Um, and what they do is it's presided over by a council called the Council of Suprema. And so what they do is they sort of question people and they make them prove that they're Catholic. And if you didn't pass the test or if you were convicted of being not Catholic or of a witch or any of the other stuff that they were investigating at the time, you got tortured. Now, the Spanish Inquisition gets a really bad rap for all the torture and murder it did. And believe me, it was not a great thing. However, there wasn't quite as much torture that went on as some people seem to think, or as pop culture seems to, seems to think that there was. Now, that's not to say there was no torture, because there was. Most popular was the rack, um, and they actually even had some other stuff, like an early form of waterboarding too. So the Inquisition goes on for quite a while. In fact, between 1480 and 1530, people are getting tried right and left by these tribunals um, for being secretly not a Catholic. And the tribunals end up executing about 2,000 people. The Inquisition sort of loses some power, it goes in and out uh, for the next couple hundred years, it's around the 1700s when the Enlightenment really starts to kick on that people start eh, really kind of wondering if this is the way to go. The Enlightenment thinkers come out against the Inquisition and say, hey, this isn't how we do things nowadays. This isn't how people do this in a civilized society. Maybe we should stop. The real nail in the coffin of the Inquisition, though, is when Napoleon starts doing his thing in Europe. He actually appoints his brother, Joseph Bonaparte, to be king of Spain. And Joseph Bonaparte just does away with the Inquisition altogether. So at the end of the day and over the life of the whole Spanish Inquisition, the tribunals processed about 150,000 people, and between three and 5,000 of those were actually executed. So not a great time to be not a Catholic. Now, the Inquisition does come back once or twice uh, over the years after the Enlightenment and after Joseph Bonaparte, but it never really ramps up to its like it was before, right? Uh, and eventually in 1834, it gets abolished altogether and is carried off into the Forbidden Forest by a centaur. That's, yeah, that sounds right. Um, and that's all there is to the Spanish Inquisition. This has been Hasty History. I've been Professor S, and you guys stay hasty, my friends.